Yes. Physics. Momentum. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Hi. I am Professor Lavender Adams, your 10th grade psychological, biological, trifo, titological science teacher, and this week I've decided to try something new. You see, school funding has increased by $2. Therefore, in the year 1980 that I am currently in right now, where there is no pandemic, I have decided to spend that $2 on buying film for a brand new and radical idea. That radical idea? Put this first class on a projector. That's right. I won't have to stand up and do my job at all for the first class. Now, I bet you're wondering, Professor Adams, what are we learning this week? And because you most likely did not read the board, let me tell you, Dave or Scott or Seth or uh, female names. This week, we are taking a look at the brain of a film nerd. Yes, in science class. Now, again, because our budget is $10, I cannot afford an actual brain, so instead I will be supplying you with a grade A artist renditioning of the brain of one Cooper Millican. Now, I bet you're looking at this picture and you're saying, Professor Adams, why does Mr. Millican look so much like you? And to that, I say, budgetary reasons. Okay, let's get into it. If you could buy a thin diaper that dramatically cut leakage, even overnight, wouldn't you try it? This is it. New Loves Deluxe. Okay, students, I'm aware I'm in a different room, but that's only because of budget cuts. Um, so they put me in the basement? Uh, yeah. All right. With my artist renditioning here, which is a lot better than I thought it would be, we are going to dissect the four main lobes of the film nerd brain. Now, the first lobe is the hobbyist pulp fictitious. Now, the hobbyist pulp fictitious holds all of the hobbies, as well as a plethora of references to some movie called Pulp Fiction. I don't know what that is because this is the 80s. Now, the hobbyist pulp fictitious also holds all of the hobbies, as previously stated. And these hobbies include writing film and TV, making a YouTube video series, and I don't know what that is, not because I'm old, but because this is the 80s. That's about it. He doesn't seem to do anything else. Now, the second lobe of the brain, which is in this general area, I'm not really sure because I'm not a real scientist, is the inspiratious communicus. Now, the inspiratious communicus withholds all of the inspiration for this young boy, as well as his strange addiction to the NBC cult classic comedy, Community. Now, I've never seen this show because it does not come out for another, like, 30 years. As for all of the inspirations, there's mainly just one, and it is apparently the star of this NBC cult classic comedy community, um, Donald Glover. Now, according to Mr. Milliken, Donald Glover is his biggest inspiration, and he drives him to be more than what he could be, because Donald Glover himself has acquired so many different accomplishments from just simply doing whatever he wants. Now, thirdly, we have our third lobe on the other side of the brain. Again, I'm not really 100% sure where it is. Now, the third lobe is called the Futurus Wantus, and I did not just make that up on the spot, for it is an actual scientific term. Now, the Futurus Wantus is basically what our little brain-dead friend here wants to be when he grows up, and of course, this being the small brain of a film nerd, he wants to be a director and screenwriter and probably an actor. I don't know. He's, he's pretentious. He probably thinks he could do it. But, um, yeah, there's not much more to that. It's just kind of the smallest lobe of the brain. Doesn't really exceed what he could do, except the fact that everyone tells him he can't do it. I mean, not everyone, but society in general. I'm getting too uh, philosophistic here. I'm a science teacher. So let's move on to the last and final lobe. Well, the last and final lobe is in the back of the brain. It is the biggest heartus lobe. Now, the biggest heartus is actually the origin of all the love in the heart of this film nerd. 
And for anyone who thinks that love actually comes from your heart, you're a idiot, all right? And a probably a child. I'm just spitballing here, but you're probably a child who is stupid. So the biggest heart is slope generates all the love and affection that this small brain film nerd boy could generate. And to be honest, it's genuinely like oversized. Um, you see, this particular person has a lot of love in his heart and he just, he loves everyone that he could come across. He has love for his friends and his family, um, anyone that he's known for a while or even not for very long. He's just a very kind-hearted, good person who will talk to you for hours if need be. Even if he has a schedule or a due date, he just, he wants to talk to you, trying to make you feel better. Because in all, he really wants to make movies so people can feel how he feels. Because the concept of emotion is lost on him, see, refer back to the brain. And maybe making other people feel how he feels will give him an idea or a generalization of just what life can be. So that is all for the Small Brain Film Nerd dissection. And next week, we will be, I don't know, something doing something scientific. Hopefully, I won't be hung over in a ditch somewhere because you kids <sighs> depress me. I hate teaching. I hate my job. This is terrible. All right. Goodbye from Professor uh, Lavender Adams, who has very foggy goggles right now. Ugh.